Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in today's video, I want to talk to you about toxic MDF. It's coming up next. So if you saw a copy of The Guardian at the weekend, uh, you probably will have seen this story. Uh, what is it? Our MDF furniture brought toxic fumes into our home. Uh, it's a story of a couple just down the road from me in Chiswick who paid a lot of money for some fitted furniture. Uh, it gave off a lot of fumes to the extent that they couldn't be in the room, the couple. Uh, after a, some haranguing, the firm supplying it, high-end firm, to say a lot of money, uh, the firm supplying this uh, ripped it out. The couple had, uh, had the air quality monitored at great expense as well. And after a, uh, apparently a considerable amount of back and forth over 18 months, uh, the couple were refunded. Uh, apparently the firm offered to, to replace it completely, painted in water-based paints, uh, and they declined that. They, they, uh, according to the story, according to the report, uh, they, they went another, another route. Um, it, it's a sorry story, and I feel, I feel for everybody involved in it, I've got to say. Uh, from the supplying firm, you don't want this kind of publicity, you don't want this sort of bad press or unhappy clients. Uh, uh, and for the couple concerned as well, you know, the last thing, it's, it's bad enough having builders and blokes in your home. Uh, it's, it's even worse when it doesn't work out for you. Um, I've wanted to do uh, a story about MDF and the relative health concerns about it for a while, and this is a convenient thing to hang it on. I'm not going to discuss the story in particular. I'd encourage everybody to go and read the story themselves. There's a lot of holes in the story, a lot of bits that seem to have been skimmed over. Uh, and I think that headline, our MDF furniture brought toxic fumes into our home is uh, very carefully written, very carefully worded, because it implies to the casual reader that it's the MDF at, at fault. But I think upon reading the story, my impression was certainly that it's the paint that's problematic, not the MDF. But we'll see. I've contacted everybody involved in the story, uh, the, the, the couple, the firm supplying the furniture, the air quality guys, and the, the journalist, the reporter who wrote it, and we'll see if anybody gets back to me. It's early days yet. The story only came out on Saturday, and I'm recording this on Monday. Uh, but I wanted to talk about MDF uh, and the potential health risks, because it's one of those things that comes up all the time, especially about MDF and formaldehyde. Now, if anybody ever asks me about formaldehyde and MDF and the health risks, I typically point them towards this document. This is the British Health and Safety Executive Frequently Asked Questions uh, uh, sheet. It's about five pages long on MDF and the dangers of working with MDF and exposure to MDF. And it does talk extensively about uh, formaldehyde. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll quote from this. There's a link to this uh, in the video description below, and there's a link to the Guardian article as well. I can't remember if I, if I mentioned that as well. Let me just quote this. What is formaldehyde and where does it come from? Formaldehyde is a simple but essential organic chemical that occurs naturally in most forms of life, including people, some foods we eat, and trees. All products made from wood will therefore emit some naturally occurring formaldehyde. It's widely used in the manufacture of numerous products, including shampoos, plastics, carpets, textiles, resins, glues, etc. Um, yeah, it's, it's formaldehyde is in, in all wood. Uh, what's the problem with that? Well, it's also uh, suspected of causing cancer. Uh, in high doses. Formaldehyde is classified in the UK and the EU as a carcinogen and it carries the hazard statement suspected of causing cancer. Now the Guardian article is firmly hanging its hat on the formaldehyde angle with MDF so let's continue uh, on that for a little bit. There's a couple of sort of money quotes from this uh, health and safety executive guidance. Uh, let me quote direct. The most common binder for boards intended for dry environments, we'll come back to that, is urea formaldehyde. Other binders may be used depending on the grade of board and its intended end use. For example, melamine urea formaldehyde, phenolic resins, and I'm going to struggle with this one, polymetric diphenylmethane diisocyanate, or PMDI, 
uh, are generally used in boards that are required for improved moisture resistance. PMDI binder is not formaldehyde based and consequently does not emit any formaldehyde. The exact constitutes of an MDF board will vary from product to product. No kidding. So how much formaldehyde is released uh, by MDF board? Again, quoting from the Health and Safety Executive Board, uh, there's, there's lots of technical stuff about the specifications and whatnot, but basically two European formaldehyde classes, E1 and E2. Uh, the release of formaldehyde in E1 boards is 0.1 parts uh, parts per million uh, and in E2 boards it's between 0.1 and 0.3 ppm. Money quote again, in Europe the majority of manufacturers produce only low emission boards. There are some boards available on the market with extremely low formaldehyde emissions and some with no added formaldehyde so essentially the only formaldehyde that's being released comes from the wood that the formaldehyde is uh, that the MDF is made from, and yes, contrary to popular opinion, MDF is made of wood. Uh, manufacturers from outside Europe may produce boards that have higher emissions. So uh, this brings us back to the money quote from before as well. Uh, PMDI binders are generally used in boards that require improved moisture resistance. So if you're buying MDF, fairly obviously buy a board that's manufactured in the EU to these standards and preferably use moisture resistant MDF. Uh, better still use a known brand as I do. The brand that I use is Medite MRMDF and they will produce a spec sheet uh, that goes with it and again buried right at the bottom of this technical spec sheet, Medite MDR conforms to the E1 formaldehyde levels as well as also the uh, lower levels required by CARB Phase 2. Now, CARB, the Californian Air Resources Board Phase 2, uh, changed their levels to a much more stringent level of 0.05 parts per million uh, uh, as a target level uh, and 0.1 parts per million as an action level. This gets a bit sort of jargony and a bit sort of technical, um, but basically, uh, it, it all prompted me uh, to go out and buy one of these little guys because as much as I care about the health of my clients and their homes, I actually care quite a lot about mine as well. This is a, uh, an air quality monitor. Uh, again, there's a link in the video description to these. You can buy these for about 40 odd quid if you prepare to wait for a couple of weeks to get them from China or you can buy one from Amazon for about 80, which is what I did. Uh, these as well as giving a fairly crude air quality indicator only goes down to PM 2.5 whereas the other one that I have goes down to a third of a micron. Um, it does give temperature and humidity but it, importantly it gives HCHO or formaldehyde levels and TVOC so total volatile organic compounds. Uh, those were referred to in the uh, Guardian article as being extremely high in this room which is why I think it's more of a paint problem personally but read the article make up your own mind uh, but I bought this and I was painting in here last week uh, I closed the workshop up over the weekend wasn't in at all uh, and when I came in and put this on I was amazed how high the levels were uh, considering I only use moisture resistant medite <laughs> MDF boards and I only use ultra low VOC uh, water based paints. So I opened the doors and windows up a little bit and after about five or ten minutes the levels have gone right down. These levels are uh, for formaldehyde 0.047. Let me get my crib sheet. Uh, what's the safe level? Uh, WHO uh, 0.08 and we're at 0.041 so half that uh, and total of VOC levels uh, ideally between 0.6 and 1 and we're at 0.3 so we're well within those limits for a home and this is in a workshop where I cut things up <laughs> and paint them um, which makes me wonder what exactly are we worrying about in fact it made me wonder what sort of levels I'd get on this if I exposed it to actual 
real tree wood. Okay, so I'm at my workbench, uh, which is MDF, but it is much of the MDF and it is completely sealed. I've got my little air quality monitor here uh, with its nice low reading. So what I'm going to do, I cut up a whole load of wood last week for a curve cut test. Check out the YouTube channel if you haven't seen that. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to surround my little air quality monitor with natural timber and see what happens to those levels. Because I'm curious, I wonder if this perfectly natural grows on trees timber will actually produce similar or higher levels. We're just going to let that run for a while. So 20 minutes or so of close exposure and we've got levels of over 0.1 for formaldehyde and almost 0.8 uh, for TVOCs. Uh, they both exceed uh, comfortably exceed the CARB, the Californian Air Resources Board levels, uh, and also exceeds the WHO, the World Health Organization's guideline for indoor formaldehyde. Um, and that's just from wood. So where does that leave us exactly? Well, obviously articles like this one aren't going to do the independent maker and installer community any favours. Uh, and I guess one of the extra things we'll have to start keeping in our installs kit is one of these little monitors that'll monitor uh, formaldehyde and TVOC levels. Check the room before you start and check the room when you finish. Uh, hopefully that would allay any fears. Obviously if you're not already then you probably should be using a branded known uh, board from a, a known manufacturer who will produce a spec sheet hopefully that not just complies with the current European standards, but also the much more stringent CARB Phase 2 standards as well. Uh, and if you or your clients do have any questions or queries, then point them in the direction of this excellent Health and Safety Executive uh, FAQ sheet, which should hopefully uh, allay any fears they may have. You have to wonder though what it is we're shooting for uh, when a few bits of natural timber wrapped around the air quality monitor is enough to put it beyond the levels that the WHO and CARB2 actually recommend. Uh, I have no answer to that, so that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.